morning so it is very very early on Thursday morning as you can see it's still dark outside it's time for yet another travel vlog so as the title would have already told you I am on my way to Thailand I'm so so excited because this is my first ever international solo trip and I just I don't know what it's going to bring with it but I can't wait so I've partnered up with Cox and Kings as well as the tourism authority of Thailand for this trip and I'll be going to two places. The first one is Chiang Rai, which is the northernmost city in Thailand. So if you open up the map of Thailand, you're going to see Chiang Rai right at the top. It isn't so well known compared to a lot of other places in Thailand. I too didn't know about it and I did a lot of research and I was like, wow, this place sounds amazing because it's a historical city. And it's got so much going on, so many beautiful temples. And it isn't that touristy right now which is like the sweet spot for me. There's so much more to explore there. And afterwards, I'll be heading to Bangkok. Everybody knows Bangkok. So I feel like I don't even have to give you an introduction. But yeah, the last time I was in Bangkok, I love the place. It's absolutely full of life and there's so much to do in Bangkok that I'm really excited to be revisiting it again. I'm not going to bore you with too many details right now because I'm vlogging all along the way. So you guys are going to see and get to know every single thing. Right now, I am in Mumbai airport waiting for my flight to Bangkok from where I will then catch another flight to Chiang Rai. And I can't wait to check into my hotel. I also can't wait to take a nap. I'm going to take a good nap on the flight because I'm very, very sleepy. See you guys soon. So it's been a while since I could talk to you. Uh, I landed in Bangkok. The flight went really nicely. Then I had to get my visa on arrival, go to immigration and all the other technicalities when you're traveling to a foreign country. And now I'm waiting to board my flight to Chiang Rai. I found myself like wandering around the airport. Then I was like, no, I have to get this flight. I, I will miss this flight if I wander anymore. And I'm so excited at the thought of all the shops here which sell everything whether it's food or just beauty stuff that I don't get back in India so I did my first Thai shopping and it's all food related it's all in a bag here they always have a lot of great dehydrated fruits so I'm taking some of them home for mum and of course I'll eat as well and I went to the food court area and there were so many options everything looked so so good there was this one restaurant serving authentic japanese cuisine and there was like ramen and gyoza and everything and i, I just i was looking at the restaurant and i wanted to cry because it looked so beautiful but i didn't really have time to sit down and eat ramen and stuff so i just picked up some mcdonald's because the mcdonald's in thailand is fantastic i love mcdonald's back home as well but this is just so much better and I've been dreaming about it. So I picked it up and I'm just waiting to board my flight. Bought some fresh peach juice. Apparently it's fresh but it's also bottled. I just love the packaging of it because it looks so cute and I'm feeling really thirsty as well. So can't wait to try this. I have finally landed in Chiang Rai. There was a little delay in my flight from Bangkok to Chiang Rai, but it was really, really nice when it happened. I slept through a lot of it, but it was, it was lovely. I'm just loving the service everywhere. It's just so smooth and everyone is really, really polite. Chiang Rai is a smaller destination, a smaller airport. Uh, I think there were just four international travelers in my flight. The rest of them were all Thai nationals. So I have got the shuttle to the hotel that I'll be staying at. It's really nice. It's basically like a mini bus, but I'm alone. 
and yeah I cannot wait to be in my hotel right now and just sort of freshen up and have a good night's rest the traveling for today and I'm in my room in the Duset Riverside Hotel in Chiang Rai. It seems really really nice. It's not like completely in the city. It's a little outside the city but the views are supposed to be really really beautiful. The room is nice. It's not too fancy but it's cozy. It's spacious and there's like a view I think out the window but it's night now. I really can't see much. I tried looking and it's difficult. So I think I'm going to leave the room tour also for the morning because this is not optimal lighting. I think you guys will see the whole glory of the room and everything in the morning. So now basically I just have to figure out what to eat I think. There's fruit in the room though. Let me show you guys. There is dragon fruit. I think this is dragon fruit. I'm very rusty with my fruits. This is dragon fruit, right? <laughs> I think so. When in Thailand, you should just eat maximum of the fresh fruits. We are really lucky that we get good fruits in India as well. But I think especially people from western countries really enjoy coming to the tropics just so they can eat fruits, <laughs> among other things. I still have my luggage sticker on from the airport. <laughs> they made me put this on in Bangkok. I just have to get fresh, I have to get ready, I have to connect to the Wi-Fi and tell my mother that I reached and I'm safe. No relaxation or rejuvenation can begin without a good meal and the shower gave me a serious second win and I was feeling hungry so I ordered Khao Soy from room service. It's a coconut and meat based dish which is mild but still very very flavorful and I can't wait to dig in. So it's my first proper morning in Thailand but since I started traveling and I arrived yesterday we're gonna call this day two anyway because <laughs> it is the second day I am standing in front of the window as you can see by all of the lovely natural light and I can finally see my view it's beautiful the river is passing by here you can also see like a little bit of the hotel lawns and trees there's a lot of greenery beyond that but yeah it's absolutely beautiful so I'm quickly going to show you around this room like a little room tour. Please excuse the mess that I have made. When I unpack it kind of looks like a hurricane hit but still. Um, I'm just going to take you for a little spin then we'll head down for breakfast and then I have to head out for the day. So here I'm just inside my room by the door. So I'm going to start from what I can see. So we walk a little inside. This is the closet. <laughs> the door was a little tight so I opened it right in the beginning and there are hangers, there are robes and there's also a safe and here's the hairdryer. So extra pillows as well. And here is a full length mirror. Hi. <laughs> going to enter into the bathroom area. This is like the basin and stuff. The shower area. There's also a tub, which is super nice. There is where I've kept my suitcase. Let's not look at that area too much. This is also the dressing table, which I've made the messiest of all. But I think it still looks very nice. This is like home base for me. This is the television, which somehow I haven't turned on till now, and I don't think I will. There's a little tea coffee station here and the mini bar is here. Now we're getting to the absolutely best part of the room. That's the view. How gorgeous is this? So I had no idea what fruit this was. It only looked familiar. But I still didn't know. I thought these were lychees because I opened them up and they do kind of look like lychees inside and they taste like lychees. But turns out these are rambutans. Um, people on my Instagram stories did correct me. So thank you guys. Now I know.
back from my brilliant breakfast downstairs and it's raining now. It seems to be pouring actually. Oh, I'm a little bit disappointed. Luckily, I had already worn my very rain friendly native shoes. I'm not going to let a little rain spoil my fun of today. In fact, I think it could even add to it. And I also have a small umbrella. Never go to a tropical country without carrying an umbrella or you're going to have to buy one locally. So, I'm ready for my tour now. We're going to be leaving on the tour really soon. <laughs> this is Pen, my tour guide. Hello, my name is Pen and a tour guide. <laughs> because of the rain, uh, we might be switching up some things. It's a two-day tour after all. So, something that I was supposed to do tomorrow, I might do today. And what I was going to do today, I might do tomorrow. That's the beauty of a tour like this. You just have the freedom to switch things up if you need to. It's still raining. I hope it stops. <laughs> This is the Mecca Chan Hot Spring on the way to Chiang Mai, very far from Chiang Rai. You know? <laughs> it's been a time two hours. So, uh, yeah, it was a very long drive. I had a nice nap, and right now the water here is bubbling everywhere. I don't know if you guys can hear it and see the one behind me. Uh, the water is 98 degrees centigrade, so that's almost boiling point. You definitely can't touch it. It says here you can boil an egg, and he said the egg is fully boiled in five minutes. Five minutes, yeah. Um, I did some shopping for some more snacks, and now we're just going to go across the road. I have a banana. <laughs> <laughs> across the road from the previous Me? hot springs. Yeah. And <laughs> This area is supposed to be like the foot spa area. It's supposed to be healing water and you can dip your feet inside. It's really hot though. I mean, you need to get used to it apparently, but it's very, very hot. Good for healthy. Good for healthy. like a road trip or uh, going by a bus between the two places you usually have a stop there just to stretch your legs and there are a lot of shops also there are restaurants selling food obviously uh, there are souvenir shops and of course there are the springs itself so it was really nice I did a little bit shopping I'm restricting my shopping more towards food right now so I bought a seaweed snack and I also bought some rice cakes so I'm really excited to try all of this out soon Closer, and we are stopping for lunch right now. We are having lunch in this restaurant, and just in front of me, right here, is the very, very famous White Temple. Um, which, if you've ever googled any pictures of Changra, you've seen this temple for sure. So we are just going to do that as soon as we have lunch.
after an incredibly satisfying lunch, uh, we finally went over to the White Temple. Uh, this is really famous, again, as I mentioned earlier. It's a very modern temple, uh, but it's considered as a symbol of Chiang Rai now. It was built, I think, in the year 2000, so it's just 16 years old. Very new compared to most of the historic temples around Thailand, which were built by their various kings over the years. And even Chiang Rai is a very historic city, but that temple is just 16 years old. It was built by a professor. So it's something like unlike anything I've ever seen or will see, I think, in a temple because most of the temples here are very colorful with gold motifs and stuff. This one is like pure white and it's got like mosaic work with mirrors in it. Um, it's very, very artistic and beautiful. Uh, something so unique like you'll never see elsewhere, I think. Um, so it's just worth going and also the entry is free. That's worth mentioning and it's kept up wonderfully. So the art is supposed to be open to interpretation but as my guide explained to me and it was actually clear if you have a, a closer look at it it's supposed to depict like when you're just entering in you see all those hands sticking out and all that that's supposed to be hell or just just the, the underworld like the negative side of the underworld and where you go if you sin or lead a bad life and then there are those two guards and as you proceed towards the temple itself uh, you'll see like a lot more positive figures uh, those are like they are angels something like angels and there are also a lot of lotus flowers because that's considered to be a sacred flower and it's like an offering to Buddha inside there's no photography allowed um, but it's also something very unique as I said it's built newly so you'll see like Pikachu and minions and all in the wall art I think uh, this was a temple meant to show the Buddhist way to even younger people so you'll actually see that and again it's the similar thing about heaven and hell inside and like the circle of life you're born you die stuff like that something very very unique and even the toilets were beautiful did you guys see like golden toilets and there's a lot to see and do there there's a little souvenir shop i just picked up a couple of postcards and if you come here needless to say that is an absolute must do it was something else i think the experience is going to stay with me for quite a while now we are on our way to the next attraction of the day which is the boat tour which i'll talk to you guys more when we reach there. Also, remember I was complaining about the weather in the morning. I thought we might not be able to do the boat tour, but the sky kind of cleared up. We we're so lucky. By the time we reached the temple, the sky was so clear and there were these like blue sky and candy floss, white clouds. It was really pretty and I just, I felt very lucky. It also got a lot hotter uh, in the morning when it had rained. It was nice and chilly, but it got warm and muggy now. Just like Mumbai, nothing different really. I was just happy to get back into the air-conditioned car because it's a bit uncomfortable outside. So we're at the boat pier now. We're gonna take like an approximately 40 minute boat ride and then go to the hill tribe villages. So I'm gonna start vlogging now because I have to walk carefully. It's a bit mossy. <laughs>
tried. We've just arrived at the model hill tribe villages. There are three or four different hill tribes in the area. So they've just made like uh, models of their villages. They're not their real villages, but you can see the way uh, that they lived. So that's where we are going now. <laughs> Guys, there's a giant iguana here. He's like a bit creepy but beautiful. It's all black and white. He looks really angry. I, I guess I would be too. And there are friendly doggies. Yeah, they're friendly. This is snake inside. Very friendly. <laughs> so sweet. <laughs> and there's a snake here. Yeah, they cross this. Which you can take pictures with if you want, but I'm definitely not doing that. Yeah. time to sum up the last little attraction please ignore my Bridget Jones road trip here uh, because I was in the boat obviously I didn't carry scrunchies we took a boat in the river it's the same river that I can see because after we were done with the boat cruise uh, we reached my hotel in like five or ten minutes it was literally that quick the boat trip was fantastic but the hill tribe village I don't know it was the only thing that fell a little short for me it was not bad per se I just felt like it didn't live up to what I thought uh, because it's off season a lot of the shops were already closed and there was not much happening and what was happening seemed a little too like a tourist trap uh, it was not really bad as I said but it was not the best attraction of the day everything else was fantastic but I still really really loved the boat ride to and from the hill tribe village that was just awesome. I mean, I've been on so many boats in my lifetime. Like seriously guys, I've been on small boats and big boats and pedal boats and row boats and motor boats and lots of boats, okay? <laughs> I've even sailed with my dad when I was young, who was a sailor. So a boat ride isn't something that's new for me, but everything about this was just perfect. First of all, it was a river. So uh, it's not like choppy water, it's usually a very very smooth ride. We just had a couple of bumps literally here and there when there were like rapids but otherwise it was very smooth. It had rained so there was a little chill in the air especially when we were coming back it got a bit more chilly. Um, but the sun also felt so pleasant, it was covered and it was a motorboat so like a speedboat but the shape was very traditional and it was just very very comfortable and enjoyable like the best boat ride I've been on in my life and I didn't time it it's supposed to be about 40 minutes each way 
but I didn't want that boat ride to end. <laughs> it was very nice. So I would recommend it just for that. I loved my first day here and if it isn't already evident, I'm completely falling in love with the city of Chiang Rai and the outskirts and everything. The food is yummy. The people are lovely. It's just really, really nice. It's so green as well. So if you're into like nature and stuff, you will love this place. It's just, it's nice. And I am eating all the Thai food because, oh my God, it's amazing. The last time I came to Thailand, uh, seven-ish years ago, I was in college. Uh, we were only in Bangkok and we were there for three weeks because we usually do long holidays. I didn't end up eating a lot of the local food. I think me and my mom and dad, we are not so adventurous food-wise. So I wasn't familiar with Thai food and we didn't end up eating a lot of it. But in the time since then, in Mumbai, I've opened up to a lot of different Asian cuisines. I've tried um, Thai food, I've tried Japanese food, so I've become more comfortable with it. And here, I'm just eating only Thai food because it's the best thing ever. The pad thai this morning, oh my god, it was dreamy. I wish I could finish it. It was so much, but it was just delicious. I think wherever you look, you're going to get really great food. Right now, it's quite early. It's just 5 p.m. But I think I'm mostly done for the day. I'm not tired, but I just want to get started with doing some work on my computer. Not the most glamorous thing, but it has to be done. And I have an earlier call time tomorrow morning for the second day of the tour. So... Yeah, I'm gonna get room service also today because I can continue doing some stuff. Tomorrow also we have a really exciting day planned. I'm going to the border of three countries. So that sounds amazing and there are a lot more nice things. So I can't wait for that. This is what I call soup with a view. And I can hear the birds chirping outside. It sounds amazing. So it's been a good few hours since I last spoke to you guys. In which time I've changed, removed my makeup, just chilled. Got a little bit of work done on my computer. But now we're taking a break because dinner has come. Yay! So I got me some fried rice, it's shrimp fried rice and look at that cute little egg on top. Isn't that adorable? I think the whole plating is really really nice. So I'm going to dig into this dinner and it's been an absolutely wonderful day exploring Chiang Rai. Just discovering the land and the terrain, discovering the culture, the architecture as well as the people. I really do feel forever young and I just feel so good. I feel like it's showing on my face right now. I'm not even wearing any makeup. I just feel really really happy and even when I've come across locals who I can't speak to because we don't speak the same language, we just communicate in the language of smiles and <laughs> that makes me feel even more good. I feel like we understand each other though we aren't speaking a common language. So I think this is where I'm going to end the first part of my Thailand vlogs. Of course, there will be a lot more. So tomorrow's exploration and everything else is going to be in my next vlog. If you enjoyed this vlog, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more travel vlogs, fashion videos, hauls, shopping, the likes. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye!